All right, so there's no disputing this. When you combine all the cash flow together and then make a lump sum payment, quote unquote, an extra payment to your one debt being the lowest debt, you're going to go faster than the person that is trying to pay everything off at the same time. It's not going to work, right? You're going to go faster. And that's been proven time and time again. Now, the other option over debt snowball, as it relates to making extra payments, there is debt avalanche and cash flow index formula. Debt avalanche is going to look at the highest interest rate debt. In that case, debt avalanche and debt snowball are saying to do the same thing, right? Because the highest interest rate would be the credit card. The next highest interest rate would be the car. The next highest interest rate would be the mortgage. So it's in the same order. Debt snowball, debt avalanche are in the same order. Cash flow index, also in the same order. Velocity banking, also in the same order. Velocity banking, always looking at cash flow first, interest saving second, balance third. Debt avalanche is looking at interest first. Debt snowball is looking at balance first. Cash flow index is looking at cash flow first. So all four of those strategies are actually telling you to do the same thing in this scenario here. Pay that credit card off then pay the car off, then pay the home off. The only thing is when you're looking at the infinite banking concept or whatever marketing term you would like to use to keep it simple, we could say if you were to use a whole life insurance policy, a whole life insurance contract that is designed for high cash value, growth, short term and long term, instead of taking your extra cash flow each and every month and applying it toward debt, you would actually take that cash flow and you start funding a life insurance policy. So you're going to actually start saving money first into a cash value life insurance policy of which then at a certain point in time, you would borrow money out of that policy to then pay off these debts one by one. From a timeline perspective, that is the slowest way to pay off debt. So you might ask yourself, well, why would I do that? Does it make sense out of all the debt elimination strategies you're telling me that using a whole life insurance policy, that would be the slowest way to get out of debt, but it may not be the worst way to get out of debt, even though it may take longer, right? And this requires a multi-dimensional way of looking at this, right? For you to comprehend that that may actually be more efficient in terms of when it's all said and done, when I'm completely debt free, what do I have to show for? And I think I have personally been witness to a lot of people in their late 50s and 60s that dedicated a lot, a big portion of their life eliminating debt, right? And during that time of becoming debt free, what happened? Taxes, and inflation, cost of living, everything increased. The value of their dollar decreased. So although they gained cash flow along the way of becoming debt free, when it was all said and done, and now they're debt free, they're still somewhat paycheck to paycheck. They, they don't have the big gap between what they make and what they spend, despite being completely debt free and living below their means. It's like it's still extremely costly to, to live in the United States, right? Or in a particular state that they're that they're in. So they find themselves scratching their heads like, did I do something wrong? I thought paying off debt first was the, the best thing to do. And don't get me wrong here. I'm a big fan of eliminating debt. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big fan of eliminating debt. But if that's all we do, stop there. And we don't think beyond how can we create more value on this planet how can we live more abundantly if we think small and just think about oh how can i just cover my cost of living and be protected and create my own little bubble hate to break it to you the outside economy the outside world is going to affect your own personal economy if you don't think which is the hardest type of work to do which is to think you don't know, think of ways to be productive and multiply your fruit to be a generous abundant giver and receiver you may find yourself 59 65 70 years old barely making it with your 401k social uh pension plan 401k social security right social security and maybe disability income, whatever it is, like it may not be enough. I'm, I still have yet to personally meet someone that is over the age of 59 
retired that does not have a business where they were able to successfully be financially free, right? Maybe they have slight financial independence, but they're one medical emergency, one surgery away from financial disaster. That's the honest truth. I've yet to meet that person that is over the age of 59, debt-free, receiving income distribution from, say, 401k, pension, social security, and that is enough to live the lifestyle they want to live. I haven't met that person yet, despite all the correct things they... So using a whole life insurance contract to that degree, understanding how to make your dollars more efficient, shift your mindset, create a paradigm. But for the purpose of this video, we're just going to be looking at timeline. I'm not going to go as deep as I thought I would. I was already going deep with with this um, because I just wanted to give really good context here. So I presented the timeline to say, if you were to start with a whole life insurance contract first and not pay anything extra towards your debt, you're absolutely gonna go longer in terms of eliminating debt.